days, you know, you thought about it, tried to schedule it, even found yourself daydreaming about it. Well, today it's yours. Put all the guilt aside. This is a working woman's holiday. I think it's safe to say, if you're a woman, you could use some rest. Our fast-paced society creates great expectations, but nothing like the pressure-packed plans we make for ourselves. We've got husbands, homes, careers, church, children, and the list just goes on and on. Women at work are trying to succeed while juggling jobs at home. The stay-at-home moms are trying to figure out who came up with this title so far removed from the truth. And retired women, you're so busy. When did you ever find time to work? We're all simply busy being busy. So, super women, super moms, it's time to slow down. And before you can even get a chance to feel guilty, please say hello to our guest, author Kim Thomas. Hi. 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 Good to see, see you. you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Share too. with us today how to slow down and rest as women, and perhaps maybe we'll take a little nap. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us. Come back. Let's talk about slowing down and just breathing. Breathing. Hmm. After the makeover of my home, I wanted to do something for Diva Supreme Sandy Sutton. I wanted to allow her to feel the excitement and joy of receiving. But what do you give someone who has given you so much? Oh my goodness! This is too much! No, not really. <laughs> Someone who has peeped into your innermost heart, saw your desires, and gave you exceedingly more than you knew was possible. Everybody loves you. Mm. I have to return the gift. I have to give to her what she has given to me. You okay? <laughs> I have to peep into her innermost heart. When I look in the mirror, see her desires. A really round face, which I've always had. My nose seems to be getting a little bit wider. My eyes used to be so much bigger and brighter. And my you give her exceedingly me. more than she knows is possible. Get ready, Sandy. My gift to you, a home makeover. Good, I love to see you. Oh, you look beautiful. Now look at you. Look at your hair. I'm not talking about the home her body lives in. I'm talking about the home her spirit lives in. It's a physical, full body makeover. The full body makeover will start with a new smile from Dr. Jeff Garner. I am very excited. Okay. Well, Are you we've, excited? I've got some stuff to show you. Awesome. That I think will be even more exciting. Oh, this is amazing. So that's yeah. what's going to happen. That's basically what's going to happen. Oh, my. There's the before. Yep. Yeah. And then we'll have a little sneak preview here, the after. Oh, <laughs> wow. What a difference that. We're going to go fresher. Awesome. We're going to go more youthful. We're oh. going to take care of some of those little problems you were yes. born with that yes. you can help. Right. I think you're ready to get started. Awesome. Yeah, we think probably with your complexion, with your, your blue eyes, with your fair complexion that we're going to be able to push the shade up a little bit, but we're not going to get you neon white. Right. Uh -huh. And um, even though this is just kind of a computer image, you know, the real thing will be really, it'll pop and it'll look really fresh and clean. And that is incredible, Jeff. And the makeover will end with a brand new wardrobe from Marissa Ensminger at B. Barnett. I'm excited. This is a lot of fun. Look at all of these pimples. Look at the shoes. Who wouldn't be happy? What happens in between time? First, Sandy loses the weight with personal trainer Robert McGowan. You should go a little pull in the process, bicep. Five, four, three, two, one. I got to push this one all the way down the ground. Then comes Dr. Jim English. What do, you, what do you really think about her as a as a patient? You know, when you look at her face, when you look at her body as a person, what do you think that you can give to her? What will she come out of with? What kind of feeling do you want her to have when it's over? I want the inside to come outside. She has got such a really good heart and it shows in her face. 
and it showed so well on her face for so long that she's got a few lines she doesn't want and we want to try and erase some of them and make her look and feel as young as she does on the inside. So, what will it take? How about liposculpting, a tummy tuck, a facelift, a chin implant, no surgery, an eyebrow lift, collagen implantation, and skin resurfacing? Well, I did say a full body makeover, didn't I? We might even give Sandy full lips, like mine. You want some big lips? I want you on the inside. Remember when you used to worry the church were big? They were too big. No. Uh-uh. We need to put some fat in there. <laughs> Not for mine. <laughs> Let's see. What's left? How about permanent makeup? We'll see. I'll be there assisting Dr. Jim English all along the way, and there may be a few more surprises. Congratulations. Surgery well done. Hey, I'm not a doctor, but I sure do have fun playing one on TV. It's a transformation of the spirit, soul, and body. Thank you for wearing cross today. Oh, yes, I wore that, especially. This is my first time wearing it, and I actually bought it, and I said I'm wearing it today. Awesome. For sin. Watch the process and the reveal. About 20 hours later, I guess really the only question I have is, is it still worth it? Okay, we're talking about giving women permission to rest. I spoke of the ceasing from and the feasting on. Mm -hmm. When we begin to cease from noise mm -hmm. and feast on silence, we'll see that there's nothing to feel guilty about. When we begin to cease from busyness and feast on leisure, when we begin to cease from anger and feast on flexibility, mm -hmm. we begin to see that these things, again, it's not about a punitive setup that God wants to punish us and say, oh, you can't do anything, so sit and, you know, we have this image of time out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, think about silence. In a sense, when we tell our kids they're going to be punished, they're put by themselves to be quiet. When prisoners are punished, they're put in solitary confinement. Uh, when somebody is angry at you, they give you the silent treatment. So we have this negative image of silence, and we just have to retool it. And the way we retool it is by ceasing from and feasting on. And in that goodness, God will fill us up with the rest and refreshment that our souls are so very thirsty for. So it really becomes by just it comes to us as we begin to establish new habits. And there, there is an opposite because there is also, you really haven't done enough, you know, getting into right. that. Uh -huh. Sometimes you're, it, it may borderline being lazy, you know. Yeah, if I sure. get into the mind frame that I just need to rest today, but there are really things that I need to be doing, responsibilities yeah. that I really need to handle. Where do you find the balance? Well, perhaps, too, <clears throat> certainly um, God is a God of balance, and so we're called to um, be diligent and be good stewards of our time, but at the same time, we're called to rest. So each person has a personal balance as to how much they need to be told to rest and how much they need to be told to be good stewards. But um, I think that somewhere along the line, perhaps, as we begin to take one step into rest, we'll begin to see that um, rest is also something that has to be perfected. It's an art, too. Mm -hmm. And so there may be some joy in beginning to learn how to do that, how to accomplish rest, uh, being creative and figuring out, how do I reduce this busyness in my life? Mm -hmm. He talked about being barefoot, because I think that in that rest, I think right. the whole purpose of the rest is to get in a place of finding God and resting with God. That's and right. We talk about being barefoot. Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, you know, um, I spoke with a friend of mine, Elsie. She's 94 years old, and she lives in a retirement home. And I've noticed that every time I talk with her, she doesn't tell me about all the things she accomplished or the things she does. She's just such a quiet and, and um, peaceful woman. And I said to her, I said, Elsie, if you had your life to do over, what would you do differently? And she just sat for a minute, and then she got a little bit of a grin, and she said, you know, I would laugh and go barefoot more. And I thought, I'm only 45. There's still time for me. Perhaps this is the secret, this laughing and going barefoot more. And then I thought about in the Old Testament, you know, uh, when Moses was encountering God, was finding his way to God. He stood at the burning bush and God said to him, take your shoes off, it's holy ground. And then I thought about in the beginning, the very first thing that God ever declared holy was Sabbath, mm -hmm. Sabbath rest. So perhaps the secret to entering into this Sabbath rest to encountering God is taking our shoes off and stepping into the holy ground. Anywhere that God is, that is holy, that is declared holy. So perhaps taking our shoes off, going barefoot, uh, I know that I've made a commitment to only wear shoes I can slip out of easily now. Oh, because perhaps nice. that will help me enter in. Yeah. And so for you, how did you find God in that Sabbath rest? Because you needed to relieve yourself from all of the stress. Where did you find the rest? I began to find peace in letting go. Uh, 
I retired my tiara as queen of the universe. <laughs> and um, each A lot of morning, us are still wearing I ours. I tell you, well, you know, moment to moment, I have to say, God, okay, I retire. I, re I recognize I'm not, I'm not in charge anymore. And that's probably the, the source behind my busyness is I do want to be in charge. And um, perhaps we can also look there and see that, you know, um, it's an act of spiritual surrender to rest, to trust that it's okay to let go for that period of time that, okay, I'm not in charge of everybody's schedule and everything that has to get done. And again, it's the more we let go, the more we release, the more we discover the goodness that is found there. And, yeah. and it does uh, beget more rest as we get to it. We begin to perfect that art a little bit more. Stay with us. Okay, we are talking today about resting with Kim Thomas, and I think we have some questions from the audience. Over here? Yes. Hi. I was thinking, as I was listening to what you were saying, that rest really needs to be divided up into three areas, spiritual, mental, and physical rest. I wonder if you could address that, please. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. She's absolutely brilliant. And after your own heart. And that's how I broke the book down. You're absolutely right. I, I, you know, it's so true that at the end of um, a night of rest, maybe you get eight hours, maybe even nine or ten. Ten sounds pretty good to me. Around that. <laughs> when you get that, you wake up in the morning and you don't find that you feel refreshed. Uh, you wonder why. You know, okay, I went to bed early. Why am I not rested? That's because perhaps we might need some emotional rest and physical mm -hmm. rest, you know. Uh, emotional rest, we may need to um, consider uh, the relationships that we're involved in. We may need to consider our attitude. Emotional rest, like ceasing from uh, dwelling on the negative and feasting on the positive. That would be good rest for our emotional world. And then yeah. in our physical world, perhaps we need to cease from hurry. Was anybody late to anything yesterday at all? <laughs> uh, I don't know about yes. you, but my, my schedule is pretty much, I'm always late for something. Perhaps we need to cease from hurry and feast on slowing down, slow down to the rhythm of life again, yeah. take that deep breath. That would be in our physical world. And then in our spiritual world, perhaps there are seasons where we um, need to cease from fear and feast on trust. I know for me, there's nothing more exhausting than a season of fear, something that sneaks in and grabs me from behind and steals away any possibility I may have at rest. And so I think you're absolutely right. We do have to treat it in a spiritual, physical, and emotional way. Is one any more important than the other? Or do we need to have them in some sort of order? I think it's certainly personal again. Some people, you know, they run themselves harder emotionally or physically. And uh, for me, it's an equal balance. There are definitely ways. And I, I find that I may be treating myself emotionally or spiritually and then forget physically. Or I might uh, forget that spiritually, if I'm not in tune, if I haven't come to remember that God is a trustworthy God, I can I can rest my fears there, then I'm going to um, not be able to even enter into a physical rest or an emotional yeah. rest. So here you have in your book, emotional rest. You know, you say cease from stress, noise, negativity, numbness, and anger. I look here and I think negativity. Sometimes we really don't know that we're being negative, but it's all in our minds and, and that really holds us up, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. And it creates, uh, not only does it create um, stress and, and a lack of rest, I guess that's the best way to put it for, our, for ourselves, but then we become a lack of rest for those around us. You know, we can be Sabbath rest for the people around us. And if we're constantly negative, um, I don't want to be around somebody like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that takes away my rest as well. So I want to give you an opportunity for Sabbath rest by dwelling on the things that are positive. God has been so incredibly generous with us. There are so many reasons to be grateful and to be positive. And noise, you talked about that earlier, all of the things right. outside of us. But sometimes it's hard to, that silence on the inside is what we really need. How do we tune out everything around us? It is really hard, and I, I broke down noise into a variety of different kinds. There's internal noise, there's external noise, there's intentional noise, there's unintentional noise. Add to that your intentional and unintentional noise, and my world is really noisy. Okay. You know, and you've got, you've got your lawnmowers blowing, you've got your blow dryers blowing, and how do we quiet that? Sometimes that's a little easier to quiet than the voices that we rehash, the conversations we had, the expectations we have that go on inside of our minds, and sometimes we just have to say, like the psalmist, be still my soul and dwell in the quietness of the Lord. Okay, we're going to talk about spiritual and physical rest when we come back. Stay with us. Okay, we have more questions from the audience. 
Kim, I read your book a few weeks ago, really, really liked it. actually found it at the end of a very long, very stressful day. Um, was looking for a book on how to be a better mother and came across this and said, I have to read it. Okay. Now, I have read it. I've far, um, given it to my sister. I'm going to give it to my mom, my best Aww. friend. I thank you for Aww. giving me permission to rest. That's great. However, Good. I still find mm -hmm. it hard to get the physical rest I need. Every night I'm in bed, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Right. How do you do it? Yeah, it is hard. I'm a, I'm a late night person too. Are you? Eight, can you get your eight hours? Eight. Very. I know. Seldom. I know. That's the that's on the light Six side. Six is good. Yeah. Well, you know, there there really are facts out about how important it is. We were discussing earlier physiologically what happens in that seventh to eighth hour of rest that is really key to uh, restoration of our body, and uh, it is really. It is um, an act of obedience to, uh, to God in taking care of these vessels that he's given us to live in to um, get enough physical rest. And there are a variety of ways. You know, I'm a big hot bath woman. I believe that if uh, there's anything that'll fix anything that's wrong with you, it's probably a hot bath. And if that won't fix it, add some smells to it, and that'll cover it. But um, <laughs> I like the idea of putting rest on my to-do list. I think, yeah, that's a good place to start. And, and when you do begin to incorporate certain activities, like, say, I'm going to allow myself an extra 15 minutes at night for a nice warm bath, not too hot because that will keep you awake, but a nice warm bath. I'm going to allow myself that um, at the end of each day, I'm going to have 15 minutes to read a biography of somebody I admire that I'm going to do. Uh, setting up sort of routines for yourself that you can count on, that you don't have to panic over when it is time to get your rest, that will help. I know some people can't, uh, my husband finds it hard to sleep in the middle of the day. So I say, well, just t t uh, take a quiet time, read something that's enjoyable to you, listen to a tape, but shut down all the outer stimuli and just uh, take a moment to, to push restart. And so physically there are a variety of things it's possible to exercise. That's a really important thing. You wouldn't think so to rest. If you're going to rest well, you need to have some good uh, routines, whether it's walking, uh, I love to swim. I find that to be, I, I said, I think I discovered why I love to swim because it's the closest exercise to lying down, you know. <laughs> so um, swimming is a great option for me for getting that exercise. There are a variety of things that we can do to help build wholeness and rest in our lives physically. But do you have a husband and a Husband, five-year-old. Now, the five-year-old does say, Mom, I need some thinking time. So he, wow. he has grasped it already. He'll tell me, turn the radio off. I need some thinking. Oh, it. what a gift. That's so, great. How, how can parents and wives really mold their families into this silence right. time, into this time yeah, of we want to model it for, the, for our families. Right. If, we're, if we're a nervous wreck, we're going to model that that's how life is lived for our, our children yeah. and whatnot. And um, one of the places to start, I say, is to appropriate times that are already quiet. Even for yourself in the morning when you're getting dressed, resist that urge to turn on the radio or the TV. Of course, not this show. We definitely right, want to turn, right. you want to turn the but show on. It, perhaps those times when you could appropriate that silence for internal rest. Um, times, like I say, driving in the van with the children, you can appropriate that for either the silent time. Let's have our thinking time. What are we going to think about? Well, let's think about the trees that God made today. I talk about even taking theme walks with your family. And what are we going to dwell on for this walk? We're going to dwell on either the, uh, the goodness of God, the gifts that he's given us, the things in our family that we're grateful for, the people we want to uh, pray for, but a theme walk so that you have something to dwell on that pushes aside all of the things that fire at us and we focus, even just focusing down can build rest in our hearts and in our lives. Yeah. Feasting on the goodness, that's what it comes back to. Yeah. And the most important part, the spiritual. I yes. say most important because that is where you get rejuvenated, you know, once right. you understand what getting in touch with God means in sure. that time of Sabbath. So we're going to talk about that Great. when we come back. Stay with us. How do we connect with God during those times of Sabbath? There's so many different tools. I, uh, I, for myself, certainly having time to read scripture is really important for me. Dwelling on those words, connecting with God uh, through what he's given us as a, a revelation. And um, on the other hand, there are ways to certainly uh, build our spiritual life. Um, some of the things we uh, participate with others in community, it's a matter of, um, you know, gathering for refreshment together sometimes. Uh, Perhaps, I don't know, uh, for me, prayer is extremely key for my spiritual life and finding rest in that time. Finding those times where um, perhaps I don't open my mouth in prayer, but maybe I just sit and listen in quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, those types of things, appropriating those types of things, that's really, really key for me. Here in the book, you say that uh, spiritual rest, you need to cease from fear, hard-heartedness, the need to know, anxiety. 
Well, now that need to know thing, the need oh, to know boy. everything, you know. We women, we I need know. to know everything. We need to control everything. It's we so have to make hard. sure that everything is in our little hands. Yeah, and it really is um, a joy when we finally come to feast on mystery. It's okay that we don't know I everything. I don't find that place I know, a it's nice hard place to enter to there. It, but you know what? That's the place where we really encounter the fact that we are the created and we are not the creator. It is those times when we rest and we say, I don't know everything, but if I really trust in an almighty and a loving God, then that's okay. I can rest in that moment. And I find Feasting on Mystery to be a wonderful new uh, season in my life. But you around. still want to think that there was something I should have done because I knew yeah. there was some. There's more, you know. You just yeah. you just find it so hard to let go and say, okay, what happened? Whatever happened? And I guess that's a matter of trusting God. It is. It is. Well, you know, so much of everything that we do, it is letting go and not being the one that's in control. And and the fact that we cannot know everything, and we're told in Scripture, we see through a glass dimly now. It's okay that I don't know everything. Once in a while, I remind myself of that. It really is okay that I don't have the answers for everything, that I have retired as princess. Well, I, that, I'm going to have to work on that one a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. Anxiety. Oh, gosh. What are the things that we waste our time on by foolishly entering into anxiety? Oh, yeah. What are the things that we live in the regret? We rehash conversations. We, we anticipate conversations. Mm -hmm. we, we make plans for how is this person going to react to me when I enter into this room? And we waste so much time on anxiety. I have spent more time on foolish anxiety probably than anything, any other time waster. And that's one that I really have to confess. I have to cease from anxiety. Yeah, and you have some uh, some rest stops that you talk about all through the book. We're yeah. going to talk about those rest stops when we come back. Okay, okay. okay, thanks. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Imagine a land filled with the spirit of the true South. Elegant, gracious, where people dine above the treetops, dance on water, and play among the stars, where every moment is extraordinary and dreams become real. For the best value and most convenient way to experience Gaylord Opryland, visit GaylordHotels.com to learn about year-round money-saving vacation packages and special events. Okay, welcome back. We're talking about Even God Rested with Kim, and you've got throughout the book wonderful little rest stops. What are they about? Well, it's like when you're driving down the highway and you're on a long trip and you pull into this area called rest stop where you get, you know, something to drink or a pause off the mm -hmm. highway. And so I use those as analogies the, at the end of each of the ceasing from and feasting on. Mm -hmm. Then I give you a rest stop, a little, a, a little idea on how to refresh yourself specifically, some how-tos. Okay. Emotionally, you have here, buy a tiny purse that will only hold your keys, driver's license, and a $20 bill. <laughs> yeah, this is in um, Ceasing from Stress. And um, I suggest that, you know, there are little things that we do in our life that stress us. One of those things for me is carrying this huge purse. And no matter how big it is, it never has what I need. And you never always can. digging. Yeah. <clears throat> it is the black hole. I tell you what's in the bottom of my purse. The lost socks. You know, all those <laughs> socks that you can never find the mate to? Uh -huh. I know they're in there because there's something in the bottom. I don't know what it is. But, um, you know, those kinds of things can stress us throughout our day. Just something as simple as having this huge bag that weighs on our shoulder that carries you all these everything things. everything that's in you there. You think you do. Try it. One day, carry a purse with just a $20 bill, your lipstick, and your keys, and your driver's license. And you'll and be you'll amazed. And you'll spend the $20 and wish you had the credit well, card. And you'll see how little you need, though. <laughs> you'll be amazed by the end of the day. You go, you know, I didn't even reach for that chainsaw that I usually carry in the bottom of my purse. Okay. Today. Here's one, a spiritual rest up. Purchase a cup. Okay, this is the cup that you're going to put all these little things in, these things that you um, you think that uh, are coming up in your life. What are the things that I have to do, the things I have to accomplish? And what I'm comparing it to is um, when Jesus was in the garden and he went and he prayed to the Father and said, if it's possible for this cup to pass, please let it. And if not, your will be done. So I suggest having a thy will be done cup in your life. Mm -hmm. And in that cup, you put all these things that weigh on your heart. And as you significantly drop them in the cup, it's the thy will be done cup. And you're surrendering mm -hmm. that stress for that day. And that's what it's all about. Thank that's, you yeah. so very much for joining us and helping oh, us hey, to I just it. surrender and to let go. And to just let go of it all. 
and Let's Surrender. So you can get this book, Even God Rested, and other books by Kim Thomas at DeborahInterviews.com. We'll kind of put you over to her website. So uh, look us up, and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. And thank you for Okay. Did you all enjoy it? You did? Good. Did you get something? Are you rested? Well rested? <laughs> <laughs>